Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> well, I'm glad we've got that out of the way. <laughs> We're both good and fine and proper. You have a good week? Yes, very much so. Excellent. You sound much better. Yeah, I feel much better. Still a little bit of a cough, but nothing too too terrible. Well, we can certainly work around that. Uh, let us welcome our friends out there. Hello, all of you out there in YouTube land. And welcome to Scenario 4 now of Grant Takes Command 2. This is the bloody Spotsylvania. So I'm pretty excited. I have not played this since... Ooh, at least 12 years ago, and I don't even know, I, I've been, I meant to pull my my old copy book out and compare the notes with the digital updates that I have here, just to see if there were any changes. I'm sure there have been some, some balance and tweaks. Yeah, I don't know what to expect here, but I'm really excited. Aren't you excited? Yeah, this will be, I'm, I'm interested to see how this plays out, because I've, I've never played this scenario. And I'm not sure I'm playing the Rebels today, so I guess I'm going to have to wait and see what you do. <laughs> As always, right? Yeah. As always, yeah, if, uh, in this case. So yeah, this is going to be a fun one, I think. It's a multi oh, five turns. Yeah. yeah, we're back to a five turn. This follows exactly on the heels. It is overlapping the one turn previous scenario of the race for Spotsylvania. I will give you the historical notes here in a moment. Suffice to say, though, this one has some very intriguing and exciting nuances that I think are going to make this one a very captivating five turns to watch. I don't know how long it's going to play, so as always, we're going to proceed with the assumption that we'll probably break this into a couple of two-hour chunks. But one of the things I love about these is the fact that when we put them out, people ask me, how long is that scenario? And I can say, well, you know, raw, it took us about X number of hours, and then when I cut it down, so with all the ums and the uhs and the thinking mm -hmm. and, the, and the ruminating over all of our various and sundry choices, then that will give you an idea if you were playing this on the table. So don't let this condensed, watered-down version of just the, the action... Uh, sway you on how long these actually are. They, they're, you could probably multiply them by a, a 1.5 factor, if I had to guess. So let me give you the historical notes here. The first five days of the Spotsylvania campaign represented some of the most desperate fighting of the war, culminating in the bloody struggle at The Angle on May 12th. Out of necessity, Lee's army invented the defensive style of fighting behind entrenchments that would characterize their efforts for the rest of the war. The Army of the Potomac tried some creative responses of their own, including the concentrated, narrow front assault on the Confederate lines led by Colonel Emery Upton, who we see over here in Fredericksburg, on May the 10th. This one is indeed bloody. I do remember how sanguine it was, just because it's so many. Uh, you, you try to do all of these flank end rounds, and then eventually, because of this 25 points here, which we'll, we'll talk about, that lurch towards that, once the two units get right into that frontal assault territory, it really is going to be lots of manpower losses. So let's talk about all the specifics of it. I'll go through the scenario rules on this one. We are only using the north map here, so it's a, a, and, and really all of it, just like in the last scenario, it's going to be condensed right around Spotsylvania Courthouse here as we are coming out of the wilderness. We do have random events on this one. This is our first basic scenario for Grant Takes Command where we have random events. But they are only going to be the possibility of rain. So we can see we have a, a 2, a 3, a 5, and a 12. Not on turn 1, but on all subsequent turns 2 through 5, we will roll the random events as per the normal sequence. And on any of those numbers, we will get whatever the appropriate rain event is, single day or multi-day. However, there can only be a maximum of 2 turns of rain here, either up against each other or somewhere spread out. Once we hit two turns of rain, if that happens, then we do not roll for random events anymore. No more suffering in the slogging mud. Two turns is all we can get on that. There is a Union Bridge out here that we did not have previously, but it is uh, for the Union only to cross from Fredericksburg uh, over the Rappahannock. We do have attachments in this one. We've had that before uh, back in 
Grant crosses the Rapidan, so we can build units up, but sadly, still, no detachments. we got to wait for the advanced rules on that one. And on turn one, this is the first time we're also going to see the army leader activation. So Grant, for the Union side, will have the one and only opportunity for this entire game. Lee will not get this opportunity on his side, but we are going to go through an army activation, which is where he can activate up to 10 units within his command radius, 10 divisions, 10 cavalry, whatever, and move them with a single die roll, which, <laughs> let's face it, we know what's going to happen here, <laughs> but we're going to see. We'll, we'll, we'll go through that together. We have Sedgwick, a possible mortality of Sedgwick. He was actually shot historically because he wandered too close to the front lines on May the 9th, and I believe he actually lingered for a couple days. I think he officially died on May the 11th, if I remember. So whenever he leads an assault, so if he initiates an assault, uh, not an attack on the march, when we roll our combat dice, if the results are a match, a natural doubles, for both Roger and myself, then he is killed in action and will be replaced by Russell. And I believe he's probably on the back of that marker. But no other leader can be killed in this fashion. So he's the only one with a target on his back on the battlefield today. And then we mentioned that I've got Upton here. He played prominently into this. He knew how to attack the entrenchments, apparently. And Roger, you may have, uh, I know you've been reading up on it, so you may have some uh, historical notes on that yourself. But we have a marker over here for him specifically. And once per turn, or a maximum of once per turn, during an assault attempt, he can be added as an additional unit or leader or whatever. Uh, he can't be the only one. He has to be at least, there has to be at least him and another unit. And when the assault comes off, if it comes off, then he is applied, and for that immediate assault, he will remove all entrenchment bonuses for the Confederates. And last but not least, we have on this one, setting up for, I believe, the next scenario, which is Sheridan Ride South. We have all the cavalry get something to do on this one. So Stuart, Sheridan, Hampton, all of them, if they can exit the map before the end of turn three, so they have until the end of turn three, if they can get off anywhere the south edge of the map here, then they will earn points for the Union player per manpower that gets off the map. Uh, Sheridan will also get some bonuses. And then counter to that, if Stuart and some of the Confederate cavalry can get off the map, they will reduce that capability. So uh, the, the one stipulation is they can never take away anything that's not a bonus for the cavalry. So if I get, in the example here, if I get uh, eight points for cavalry off there, but Roger gets ten points reduced. The still, it's only a maximum reduction of eight. He can only take away what I would earn from the cavalry. And that's it. Those are our special rules for this day. Let's talk about the point values for stuff. We see them marked here on the map. Alberto's done a bang-up job for us. We've got all of the controlled Confederate spaces here. we got 25 points for Spotsylvania Courthouse. Then we have a, a mess of one, two, three, four, five other four-point spaces. Uh, actually, we've got six of them. Six. Six, yep. yep. There's, each of those are worth four points. And then there's an incentive bonus for the Union. If they can get all six of those four-pointers, then they will get an additional ten points. Nice, but that seems like a tall order on this one because they are spread out. Uh, we mentioned the cavalry. For each manpower value that the Union cavalry manages to get off map, by the end of turn three, that's two points per manpower. So some of those are two and three manpower. So at least one or two of those cavalry brigades or divisions could be some nice points. Counter to that, as I mentioned, Stuart and the Confederate cavalry can reduce that and offset it. We have Sheridan and Stuart. They are plus three and minus three if they get off the map before the end of turn three. And then finally, as per usual, the plus three per manpower loss, minus two for union manpower losses. And the big threshold, which we, you know, we've discussed this time again, Roger and I sometimes sell ourselves short by just doing the bare minimum here, but it is 52 points for a union marginal victory on this one. Take that for what it's worth. 88 and above is a union decisive. I don't know. I, I Like I said, it's been a long time since I've played this, and there are a lot of possibilities for points, but with 25 points alone for Spotsylvania Courthouse, that gets you halfway there. So what do you think? 
yeah, a lot of options for the union player. And it'll be interesting to see how you, where you decide to go for your points. Uh, obviously, Spotsylvania. You got to get Spotsylvania to win, I think. I haven't done all the math. But yeah, it's going to be, I'm interested in this activate leader. I'm interested to see how you play that because that seems like that could boomerang on you. Oh, if you get a little... yes. <laughs> yes. But on the other hand, it could it could be a major game changer. So I don't know. Upton, interesting option there. Um, what he did is he he basically came up with the idea of they actually did it with a brigade and it was successful except they weren't able to punch the line was to basically mass troops and to the the common tactic was to advance fire in advance and he he just massed his troops together and marched them straight through and to overwhelm at a point and then to spread out down the trenches uh, and then they did it with a core the second core uh, but it failed rather miserably or it succeeded depending on how you look at it uh, could have worked had they been able to enlarge the gap but they weren't so yeah this that could be a Definitely. If you time that perfectly, that could be the end of the game, too, because you could really punch a huge hole in whatever line I can try to put together. I'm really curious about how that's going to work. Having the ability to one time in in the entire game to (laughs) to overwhelm the trenches, that's that's pretty cool i gotta tell you but you're right if it if you put it in there and it well i guess if it fails then you can kick him down the road a day because if the yeah. assault doesn't come off then he only gets one attempt per day which is it was pretty neat that makes sense all right sir well then uh we can't do leader transfers to start the game so that makes things easy for us and now i have only one chance to do this army activation and i have to brace myself for rolling a one which would be a two but (laughs) moving these units two movement points it doesn't really help me because i got a traffic jam there but before all that let me wish roger good luck as always yeah good luck to you as well thank you i'm gonna need it (laughs) uh okay so we are then officially underway uh i will do the army activation Normally, with the army activation, what you do is you roll to see if it's successful, but per the scenario rules on this one, I can activate anywhere from uh, 1 to 10 units within Grant's radius, and it's automatically successful. So that takes me all the way down to the possibility of Stevenson and Hancock's uh, couple of divisions down here, uh, and of course Sedgwick and and the 6th Corps behind him. So uh, I looked at this earlier. And I was trying to figure out what I need to do, but, you know, what happens if I roll the one? What's, yeah, traffic jam. Logistics! Let's throw caution to the wind, and we're going to activate all ten. Because i got to get everybody out of this position here. So I'm going to do all three of Hancock's. Stevenson will go. That's four. Let's do Cutler. Neil, one, two, three, the three under Sedgwick, boom, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then I'll have Crawford go. All right. So that is going to be, I think, for both of us, it's one of those decisions that could go really horrible. All right, here's the big roll, plus one to this. All right, it's a four. That's fine. That's middling, yes. <laughs> All right, so Stevenson will go first. He's going to go one, two, three, and four. Hancock and Gibbon will go next. I'll go one, two, three, four. Bernie will go one, two, three. And Mott will just fall back to here. All right, Cutler will go one, two, three. Neil will go one, two, three. Potter will go one, two, three, and four. Ricketts will go one, two. Uh, I should have said that Cedric was going to transfer over to Neil. Uh, and right will go one, 
two, three, and then I'll have Crawford fall back, and Warren and Grant will go with him. There we go. We got a big old mess. I think that's everyone that's moved except for, let's see, Bernie moved, Mont. All right, so I have done my official movement, and it is now your go. I'm going to take Early's three divisions. Early's core, Heath, or Wilcox. And then under the lead stack is Mahone. Here's their moment. One die plus two. <laughs> there we go. So Mahone's going to go one, two, three. Early stack is just going to go one hex. Me will stay with Anderson, obviously. And Early will go with that. So that's it. So first initiative of the day. It's yours. I have blown my 6-1 split. I'll have Hancock activate Barlow, Bernie, and Gibbon. Here is their movement, plus one. Five. Hancock will transfer to Barlow. They will go one, two three to there. We have two remaining. What would Hampton like to do? Plus four attack. We'll retreat. So this is going to be like six is a large force. Oh yeah, yeah. So you're going to get plus two to this. Yeah, plus two. So here's the cavalry retreat roll. Five. So I will lose two and a half rounded down, so two. And so they have to go further away, one, uh, further away for two, and they have to stay on the road this way and this way, one, two, three, four. Okay. Well, I'm certainly helping you get to the south edge of the map. I had two remaining. I lost both. Okay, so they're, they're done there. Let's put Bernie here, and then Gibbon will go one, two, three. Three, four, and five to there. Uh, let's do next initiative. It's yours. Okay. Ray will take the same three guys: Mahone and Ethan Wilcox. Here's their movement. Another one. Well, Mahone will go there. Early will go with Wilcox. One, two, three. He will go one, two, to there. Doesn't do me any good to go there. Initiative. Mine again. Take the same three guys. Here's their movement. Go six. Early will stay with Wilcox. Go one. Extended March 1st, he flips. Does change what he's going to do. He's going to go one, two, three to there. Hone will go next. There's his extended March. He's okay. I'll just do a min move to there. And he will go one, two, three, four, five. Five and six to there. Initiative. Mine again. Mules, second core. All four of his units. Here's their movement. Another one. Johnson will go first. One, two, three. You'll stay with Rhodes. One, two. Ram Sir will just do a min move. One with Gordon. One. To there. No, I'll go ahead. Two to there. I'll go ahead and put him down there. Initiative. Mine again. Same three guys, same four guys, I should say. T2. Here's their movement. 
Another one. Come on, Confederates. Wow. East. <sighs> okay, Yule will transfer to E. Johnson. He'll go one, two, three to there. Rhodes will go one, two, three. Transfer will go one, two, three. Gordon will follow along behind. Initiative. Mine again with double ones. You'll activate Ramsur, Gordon, and Rhodes. Here's their movement. Six. Oh, Ramsur will go first. Here's his extend march. He's okay. He's going to move to E. Johnson. Oh, I should have announced you all transferring. I didn't do that, so he has to stay put. It's fine. You can right. move him. That's cool. Move him to Gordon. Uh, I didn't announce it, so he'll stay put. Uh, Ramster will go there. The roads will go next. Extend march. He flips. Not only are they marching poorly, they're falling apart. The beatings will continue until morale One, improves. Two, three, four, five to wait. Shop. Gordon's extend march. He's okay. So he'll go one, two, three, four, five to there. Initiative, mine again. One day I'll get to play. Yeah, but I'm rolling ones for movement, so it's not doing me a whole That's lot. That's fine. Good now, you just it? use it all up. That's cool. Yeah, we'll take the first core. Field and Kershaw. Is there a movement? Well, that's just a fine odd you do. That is a fine. That's five, <laughs> five on the day. You win the Mush Award for today, sir. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. But if anybody can still win a game like that, that's you. Okay, so he's just going to go one. Lee and Peter Stanfield. One, two, three. One, two. Three. Initiative. Yours. Hooray! Right. Let's, let's see if we can't get these guys out of here. I'm going to activate uh, Barlow, Bernie, and Hancock. Well, yeah, I can get to Bernie this way because he's not in your Zock because that. That's still treated like a regular Zoc, except for movement. So for command, it does affect. Um, so yeah, we'll do Barlow, Gibbon, Bernie. And need some extended march rolls here. Here's their movement plus one. Seven. Excellent. I will have Hancock transfer to Gibbon. Gibbon will go first. Here is an extended march, plus one. He's okay. And he's going to go one, two to there. He has five remaining. What would Stuart like to do? And he did not, yeah, he did roll for extended march. So I it's did. 11. <sighs> All those guys are already disorganized and exhausted. They flipped to three, at four and a half. So to be prepared. You know what? We'll we'll make a stand here. We'll see if Stuart can can stop you in your tracks here. Awesome. Our first catch of the day. Let's do a let's do an attack. Let's see. At at the very minimum we can fatigue out. I don't normally like this, but I'm hoping that the ratio will bore out something. We got plus one for prepared attack. I have a ratio now of two to one. So plus one for ratio. Our tactical is exactly the same. There will be a roll because you're in rough for your artillery. Here's my roll for artillery. It, it is, is used. Okay, so minus one for artillery. That's all I see. I see two up and one down for a plus one. Because yep. you stood. All right. So here is a plus one attack. Here's the attack roll. It's a six. 
<laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another one. You're finding them all today. So it's a plus five result on Stuart. Plus five on a three. It's a one DR. Okay. I'll take that off of Wickham. And I'm an 11, so it's just an end action for me. And in advance. Oh. It's manpower. Well, that did not turn out the way I was hoping it to. Okay. Retreat further away by road for one. Retreat further away by road for two. Retreat further away by road for three. Retreat further road by road is four, five, and six. Get them across the pole. Okay. Uh, I will... And you, uh, you got nothing. I got nothing. I can advance. That ends his space, so I will put him there. I'll have Barlow go one, two. Oh, yeah, he does not need extended. Three, four, five, six, and seven to there. Uh, Bernie will go. Bernie's extend marks. Let's see what happens to him. He's okay. Yeah. One. Two, three to hold on to Todd's tavern. All right, I've got my own angle. Initiative. It's yours. Well, crud. Take Field and Kershaw to D two. Is their movement seven? A little late. I'll go one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, Kershaw, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Initiative, yours. I will have Hancock activate Gibbon and Barlow. Gibbon's going to four, Barlow's going to three. Here's their movement, plus one. Five. All right. Um, Hancock will transfer to Barlow. Gibbons extend march now of plus two. He's okay. So we go one, two, three. Uh, Barlow's extend plus one. He's okay. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go Zock to Zock and flip. There we go. Initiative. Yours. This one's a puzzle, too. I'm rolling a one, so I just... Boy. It does have a demoralizing effect, personally. I, I know. Yeah, I mean, it's just... You sit back and think, okay, I mean, you roll a three, you can do something, but you roll a one, then you just create more havoc. Um... Okay, I'll take Field and Kershaw to T3. I'll have to roll for Extend March. Here's their movement. Ugh. Oh, man. I feel it. Uh, field will go first. Here's his Extend March. He's okay. Anderson and Lee are going to... Well, they'll stay with him. I guess it doesn't really matter. One, two, three... This was the role I didn't want. I didn't want him there. Dang it. Uh, Kershaw's extend march. He'll go one, two, three to there. Initiative. Mine again. Well, I'm going to take Field and Kershaw to T4. Here's their movement. Six. Here's Fields extend march. Uh, Lee and Anderson are going to transfer to Kershaw. Fields going to go first. Here's his extend march. He's okay. He's just going to go one, two, three to Sneed's bridge. Here's Kershaw's extend march. He's going to disorganize. He's going to go one. Two, three to Andrews Bridge. 
Initiative. Mine again. Oh, I've got WH Lee way up here. T dice plus two, I think, Rim. Six, eight. Eight. If you're going to try to do it, potentially rope in cheat points. Yours. You wound me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got we got movement to do. All right, let's move. Let's start with uh, Wilson activating the third cavalry. Here's their movement of plus one for him, and it's an eight. He'll transfer up to Macintosh, and they'll go one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chapman, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Initiative, mine again. Um, we'll have them go again. Oops. Right. Movement plus one. Ah, uh, boo. Then go four. One, two, three, and f four. One, two, three, and four. Initiative. Again. All right. Let's go Warren up here. Activate Cutler here. Go to fatigue two. Here's movement plus one. Seven. <sighs> Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Initiative, yours. Okay, we'll take uh, Chambliss WH Lee. Go nine. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Initiative, mine again. We'll take Chambliss T3, which is movement. Take 11, extend march. They're okay. One, two, Initiative, mine again. I'm going to pass. I think I've done all the damage I should be doing for one day. Okay. Let's see how you move, I guess. Yeah, right. Um, okay, we'll have Stevenson march to two. Here's his movement, straight up. Yeah, he's, he's... Let's get him out of the way. Let's put him there. Initiative, presume pass. Passing, yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, we'll have Sedgwick in the sixth come in. Here's their movement plus one. Seven. Oh. Uh, he will transfer to right. Neil will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sedgwick will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ricketts, one, two, three, four, five, six. To there. Initiative. Fine. Mott will activate to two. Here's movement. Five. He'll go one, two, three, four, to there. Initiative. Mine. Warren will activate Robinson and Griffin. They will come out of their trenches. There's their movement plus one. Boo. Boo. 
think we'll transfer to Robinson. One, two. Griffin will go one, two. And that's it. Initiative line. Let's go Griffin to two. Here's the movement. Five. He's going to go one, two, three, four, and five to there. Initiative yours. Okay. Yeah, I saw Ram serve like just as you started your string initiative. Oh man, I need to move him. And it's like, oh. Yeah, we just took Ram serve Teague four with Yule. Here's his movement. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's fine. And extended march. And oh. Flips. Should not have, goes should not have gotten out of bed today, sir. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was disorganized, but he can just go, he'll just go back one hex to there. Crosses the creek. Initiative. Mine again. All those ones just are killing me. That last one didn't really bother me too much, but these other ones have just been brutal. I'm going to pass for now. Okay. I will have Crawford march by himself. Here's movement. Five. One, two, three, four, and five. Initiative. Presume pass. Yeah, passing. Okay. Burnside will activate Potter, Provisional, and Wilcox. Oops, their entrenchments. Here's movement, plus one. All right. Balancing out a little bit. Yeah. We'll transfer to Provisional. He's going to have Potter go one, two. Wilcox go one hex to there. And Provisional will go one, two to there. Initiative, mine, Burnside will take just provisional. Here's movement. Uh, great movement. Darn. Uh, he'll just go to Kitching there. Uh, initiative, yours. I'll pass again. Sheridan will take J.I. Gregg and Custer. And they will go to Fatigue Level 1. Come out of their entrenchments. Here's a uh, movement plus two. That's an eight. He's going to transfer Custer. He likes the cut of his jib. And they're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And J.I. Yeah, Greg, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to there. Initiative. Yours. Okay. Early's gonna activate this Mahone. Here's his movement. <laughs> Early will stay where he is. Here's extended march plus one. I'll go one. Two, three to there. Initiative, mine again. Okay, try Gord, Teak four. Here's his movement with Yule, plus two. Five. It's a bloody miracle. Yule transfer two, Gord. Here's his extend march. Not a bloody miracle. So he'll go one, one, two, three to there. You have two he, left, right? Two left. We'll stand. Both both units. Oh uh, well. Again, sure, it doesn't matter because you're you have a restricted zock between us, so yeah. you couldn't attack him. But uh, J.I. Greg will stand. Okay. So I have enough for a normal attack on him. And we'll go ahead and make that attack on J.H. Craig. Why not? It's been that kind of a day, right? 
So eight to four gives me plus one ratio. Tactical is plus two. So this is a plus three attack. That's what I see. Okay. Plus three. Five. Okay. Not enough. Defense is a four. So just a plus one. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we it cost me another manpower. One, just two, disorganize you. Three. Disorganize. Uh, manpower. Issue? Yours. Well, I guess, just for safety's sake, I better move Custer to two. There's movement. It's fine. And they're just going to go one hex to there. Uh, initiative. Mine. Yeah, I'm going to pass. Okay. Well, I'm going to pass as well. Alright. Let us end the day here. I'm going to press the recovery button. That is recovered. Move the time marker to day two. And thus, turn two is upon us. And I know you are happy to see day one go by the wayside. Yeah, man. That was pretty rough, yeah. I don't know how I many ones like... you could roll for movement. <laughs> and then, also, flip the disorganized at the same time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the extremes of just like, oh, poor movement. And then, oh, flip. Yep. Yes, one, I... six. One, six. <laughs> one, six. <laughs> Any other time, you'd be happy for that. Uh, let's see here. Let's go through the, the steps, because we do have you know, all of our normal things here. Um... Let's see, we got a sequence of play. There we go. Uh, so first we will do our random events for this turn. That could have a significant impact on all sorts of movement. So Roger, why don't you roll our 2d6 and see what we get. Five. And it, and it is rain current. Hooray! <laughs> I don't know who that's good for, but... Not me. I'm going to put a rain marker out on our time sequence. So that's one of possible two that we could have. Yeah, rain, current. So that means that all creeks are impassable. And all, not that that's, yeah, so f for this area. And then, of course, um, we don't have any fords down here over the Po. They all have bridges from where you can see. So that's really not, the only significant impact is on movement. And the, these creeks are impassable at the hex sides. Interesting. So it's going to be a bit of a mud march today. That's going to make things harder for units to get where they need to be. All right, let's continue on with the sequence of play because I think uh, we did that. Uh, we'll do transfer phase and then we'll do attachments. So whom do I want to transfer around? I think um, I like Hancock where he is. Sedgwick's fine. Burnside's fine. I think I'll move Warren and Grant over here to Griffin. Uh, Wilson moved to, to Chapman. So the cavalry units will stay where they are, and I think that's everybody for me. Okay. I'll move Stuart. Hampton. I'll move Lee to Ewell. And that's it for me, I believe. Well, then we move on to the action phase. Uh, so just a reminder for all of you out there who are watching who have not seen a rain turn before, just a quick highlight so you don't have to go scrambling for your charts. All road movement is two movement points. So basically all terrain, with the exception of clear, is plus one to movement. So all roads are two, except for tits, which are one and a half instead of two. So for every two hexes, you can move three movement points. And uh, the other big significant factor is any creek that is not crossed by a road is impassable. So for example, here, here, and here, there's no attacking or retreating across those because they are swollen with rainwater. Um, I think that's the only big one. And there's no entrenching on the march during a rain turn. And at the end of the turn, there is no breastworks building or anything like that during recovery. So 
there's no defensive work going on this time. Uh, Isn't there a modifier, additional modifier for attacking across a creek? Yes, it's a two instead of a one. Yeah, okay. Two, cool. one, yeah. So it's like it's treated like a minor river. Yep. All right, so uh, here, let me do the first initiative roll. Here we go, turn two. And it's Snake Eyes, so it's off to you. Okay. Oh, and of course, yes, yeah, so a minus one on it on any attacks uh, initiated during a rain turn. Forgot about that. That's important. Yeah, yeah. Stuart will take Young, Rosser, and Gordon to T1. As soon as they're moving, two dice plus three. Nine, twelve. Uh, Stuart will go with Gordon first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hampton will go with Young. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mosser, one, two, three, four, five, six. Initiative, mine again. You'll activate Gordon and Reamsor. Is there movement one die plus two? Now I roll a six. I'll take Johnson first. So they can go eight hexes. Well, they can go eight movement points. Eight movement points, yeah, eight movement points. They can't go here to here because that's now blocked by the creek. So they could go, um, let's see, so that's eight. 3 to 11 is plus 1. So it's going to be plus 2, plus 4. So this will be 4 to get into there. 6 to there. And Ram Sir, Sten March, he's okay. He's just going to go 1 hex to there. Okay. Initiative, yours. I have Merit activate the 1st Cavalry. Here is their movement of plus one. Nice, 12. So they can go two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve to there. Initiative, mine again. I'll have DM Greg activate Davies. Here's his movement plus one. That's uh, five, so not very far. I guess they'll go two and four to there. Initiative, yours. You'll activate Graham Sewer and E. Johnson. Is their movement? Seven. E. Johnson will go one, two, three, four, five, six. Ramsters extend march. Three plus he's okay. Go one, two, three, four to there. Initiative. Mine again. Early will activate Wilcox. Here's his movement. Six. One, two, three, four. So this Ramster is a two combat value. Five six. Initiative. Yours. Hancock will activate Barlow. Here's his movement plus one. Seven. He'll just go there. Initiative. Yours. We'll activate Gordon. His movement. Four. One, two, three. Oh, extend march. I forgot to do an extend march on him. And that's five. He's okay. Initiative. Mine again. To activate Gordon. And Shambles. They can go 11. Two, four. Two, four, six. Initiative, mine again. Take Gordon of T3. 
with seven hexes. Here's his extend march. He's okay. One, two, three, four to their initiative. Yours. I will have Wilson activate Chapman to one. There's the movement. It's nine, so he'll go one and a half, three to there. Initiative, yours. Early, I'll activate Mahone. It's his movement. He can go four hexes. Here's his extend march. He's okay. There's no plus one on that yet. One, two, three, four to there. Initiative. Mine again. I'll take my own of T3. Here's his movement. And extend march. And now he does lose. Let's see. A plus six on 13 is one manpower loss. And he'll just do a min move to there. Initiative. Yours. I will have. Sheridan activate both cavalry. We will have a extended march for Greg. Here's the movement plus th uh, plus two. Ten. Uh, he will stay with Custer. J.I. Greg will go first. Here's extended march. Uh, let's see. We are in late war, so there is no modifier for that. Yep, he's fine, I think. Okay, yeah, it's just a five. So he'll go two, four, six, eight. And then the other guys will go two, four, six, eight, and ten as well. Initiative, mine again. Might as well push them. So we'll take them another. Here's the movement plus two. Yeah, shouldn't have pushed them. <laughs> Fragile like eggs. So they can go four. Uh, let's see, he will stay, of course, with Custer. Greg will go first. He has an extended march of plus one. He's okay. So he'll go two, four. Good. So he will join them there. Two, four. Initiative, yours. I'll take Keith to fatigue one. Here's his movement. He's just going to do a min move to Tally's mill. Initiative. Mine again. Take Rhodes to fatigue one. Activated by Ewell. This is movement. Six hexes. It's going to go one, two, three, four to there. Initiative. Yours. Can have. Cutler march. Here's his movement straight up. Two. So he'll go get him out of the way just in the moment. Initiative yours. I'm going to pass. Okay. Can have Sedgwick activate the six core. Here's their movement plus one. Six. He's going to stay with right. Ricketts will go two, four, and six. Neil will go two, four, and six. And they will go overland there. One hex. Initiative. Yours. Pass again. Cutler will march again. Movement. Three, you can go there. Initiative, presume pass. Pass, yep. Have Mott march. Here's his movement. Four. Go two and four. Initiative, presume pass. pass. Yep. Uh, 
Um, Alright, well, we'll have the 5th Corps activate these three units in range. So Warren adds plus one, here's the movement. Four. Crawford will go two, four. Robinson will go two, four. And two and four to there. Initiative, mine. All right, Burnside, this is your moment. It's going <laughs> to activate everybody, including Kitching. Move their entrenchments. Here's movement plus one. It's not your moment. All right, Potter goes there. Wilcox goes there. Burnside, which I said, transfers to Potter. Um, Kitching will go there. Provision will go there. Initiative. Pass. Pass, okay. Stevenson will march. Here's the movement. Four. Go two and four. Initiative. Mine. Sedgwick will activate the sixth core. To two. Here's their movement. Plus one. Four. Ricketts goes. Ooh, Ricketts is terrible. So we better have Sedgwick transfer to Ricketts. I'll go two, four. Neil will go overland essentially, and Wright will go two and four to there. Initiative. Pass. Okay. DM Greg activate Davies to two. Here's movement plus one. Six. We'll go two. Four and six. Initiative. To pass. pass. Burnside will take everybody in range to two. Here's movement plus one. Four. Okay. Uh, he will stay where he is. So Stevenson will go one and a half, three. Potter will go two, three and a half, Burnside three, go two, four, provisional will go to there. Initiative. Pass. Turn two is a lot faster than I expected. So we'll take Cutler to three. Here's a movement. It's three. So he can go with oh, extended march. He's okay. And he'll just go there. Uh, let's see. Initiative. Yes. Guys. Let's run down here. We got Wilson and Chapman. They're good. There, there. Check, check, check. Omaha, Omaha. Um, I will have Warren activate everybody in range, including Kitching. To fatigue level. Kitching will need an extend march. Here's movement. Plus one. Oh. Nice. All right. Robinson will go to there. Kitchens extend march plus one. He flips. Okay. Well, that answers that question. So he's going to come out. we go two, five to there. Um. Griffin will go two, four, six. Crawford will come two, four to there. Initiative mine. 
Is there anything else I want to do? I think I've moved everybody as much as I want. So I will pass. Get through this rain. I will pass as well. Okay. Very short turn. I mean, rain will do that to you. I mean, it's hard, but it also disincentivizes movement. Not that I could pass up the opportunity. All right. So let's do uh, rain recovery first. Everyone recovers. Nothing is built. It will move us on to turn three. And if you're okay, I think this is a good stopping point for today. We're at two hours. I think it's a good stopping point, yes. Yeah, okay. You know, got a, got a little bit of everything today. Got some mushy roads and mushy rolls. And yeah, I, I know how it goes. Let's wrap this up and put a bow on it. And we'll talk about the session. And we'll come back with at least turn three. Maybe more, just depending on how it goes. If we get more rain, it may be short. Uh, would you like to start that conversation, or would you like me? I'll go ahead and start. Obviously, day one was uh, movement rolls of one. A lot of guys went to disorganize. Didn't accomplish what I wanted to, obviously, which was try to make you fight for Spotsylvania, but that did not happen. Day two, the rain event, I wasn't sad to see it, at the way no. things were going. Um, I had to roll a little, I had to move a little bit more than I wanted to, but I've got my core a little more consolidated now, a little more organization. Second and third core now, straightened out a little bit more, so they'll hopefully be able to do something with them here on day three. Two attacks I had, the defense, I still think that was a good to defend with Cav, though it cost me a manpower, and my attack was probably, I was hoping to pick up something there, that was probably not a great attack but it didn't happen, so... But. There was a moment there where I had Hancock right there, and you started getting the string, and my, my very next thing on the priority list was to pull him back here, mm. because I had a feeling that Anderson was going to get froggy and come up here and attack across, and it's a very low odds attack, but look at the impassable nature of yeah. all of this, and I would have had to come right here, and then no retreat possible at all and eliminated so i was really sweating i'm like i hope he doesn't see it please tell me he doesn't see it and then you kept uh, moving and then you came up here and you move ram sewer i'm like okay i'm probably okay and then as soon as i got him i got him out of there yeah i i thought about it but i just it was one of those things where it's like okay i'm gonna end up with a guy dead in the water right there because i'll lose right now and then he'll be uh yeah just just in serious trouble where i decided i might play it safe and, and get get something organized for next day. Live to fight another day. So digging a hole because I've already given you uh, six points on manpower. Loss, right, that's right. Which, is, yeah, which so. is one less location you have to grab. So when you've already got, you don't have, is it standards mill because of cab, but you've got now an I'm easy officially way. showing, yeah, I'm showing 35 points between Spotsylvania Courthouse, Todd's Tavern, and the six points in manpower. Yep. So there's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I have a hard six, time, yeah. you know, it's hard to keep you out of these two, which is another eight. Right. I think this one, I, obviously where E. Johnson is, that's, that's going to be really, oof, that's an uphill battle, literally. Uh, I think Mount Pleasant down here, that's really pie in the sky. I think the Union getting all six of those. It, that's it's hard. Nice, it, yeah, it's nice that, to help you plan your stuff, but unless there's some openings there, I don't think yeah, I'm going to get that. That's disaster time if that happens. Right. But yeah, it looks I, to me like you got, unless I can get you out of here, you're going to pick up another 12. So, yeah, unless I can do some sort of counterattack and get you out of Spotsylvania, which might happen. Yeah. You never know. Things might break my way. <laughs> well, we have not seen whether or not we're going to have rain, so we don't know what yep. that's going to be like. Um, yep. And this is the last turn. Turn three is the last chance to get any cavalry off the map that we wish. Uh, you're using them effectively to hold that line there, of course. Uh, I'm countering that hold because I'm afraid that you're going to use them for flanks on Spotsylvania. And Wilson is down there. He's got a flex spot. He's, yeah. yeah. And that would give you... Eight points if you get them off. Yeah, and then I have to counter with somebody else. Right. 
Yeah, interesting scenario. There's so many things to take into account here. And also, new players, what do you... I mean, with the exception of Roger's one attack, this has been pretty bloodless, right? This is a open field maneuver. It's mo- firstest to the, with the mostest. This one, really challenging, just mentally, as far as... All right, what do I do now? Because I've got the fifth core up here, and what's the best way to use them? Uh, how do I... How do I prepare for something up here at the same time protecting that flank? Do I go on the offense there? Oh, no, it's raining now. What do I do? Oh, yeah. So many little variables that, that you have to consider. And what do I do with the savior of the Union, Burnside, right? <laughs> what do I do with him? He's relegated to all of this logistical support in the background, but... I. Could he could he come around this side? Would he be good to just go ahead and get some of this stuff along the turnpike? Will it rain again? These questions and many, many others will be addressed <laughs> in our next episode. But, uh, yeah, no, this is good. I, I'm enjoying it. Not not nearly as bloody as they had advertised it, but that could change here in turn 3, 4, and 5. Very much so. Well, then, everyone, we will let you go here. Come on back next time. And please take a moment as we ask you each and every week that I'm 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 at desperation time. I I really need you to click that little like button. If you're watching this right now and you see that little thumbs up, we're getting okay. But either that's telling me you hate us, which I know that's not the case, or you're just kind of like, eh, whatever. So if it's anything other than hate, go ahead and click that little button right now and of course the bell will give you the notification about when i drop these the great campaign stuff is pretty consistent and when roger and i are able to play i can most of the time get that out on mondays or tuesdays so be looking for that but that notification bell will tell you that it's there uh and i'm showing you our monetary supporters right now thank you very much to everybody who kicks in a buck or two some of you are doing it on an automated schedule i really appreciate that because i get these little heads up like hey so and so kicked in two dollars and i really i think that is the bee's knees so that does pay for some of these other little incidental expenses for running the channel uh other than that roger what a i i i feel for you man i don't want to say what a great story <laughs> like i had a good day but you did not so <laughs> it's all right yeah. it's all right i'm in it that's all right it wasn't a complete disaster <laughs> that's right uh well then we will see you all here next time have a great week roger and i look forward to next time okay thank you bye-bye <laughs>